time back, I used to celebrate two Christmases. I'd celebrate one here, and then I would travel to Russia with a mission group. Uh, the Christmas in Russia is not celebrated until January. And we would go over there and we'd have Christmas parties for orphans. We must have went to 10 different orphanages. I remember one time the orphanage was right next to the First United Methodist Church of Moscow. And we were asked to participate in the worship service on Sunday. They didn't ask me to do anything, but they asked my friend Rick to sing. And he got up and he was singing and there was four or 500 people there, a lot of people of all different ages. And he was singing and all of a sudden after he finished a song, the pastor came out. The pastor of the church in Russia, Russia came out and whispered something to Rick. And he looked bewildered. He didn't understand what she was saying because she was speaking in Russian. And he motioned for an interpreter to come up and she told Rick what she wanted. He, she wanted him to play a certain song. And he looked, looked confused because it, it was sort of out of place. They asked him to play Joy to the World. Joy to the World. Now, some of you may not remember that song. It's a song by Three Dog Night. And he played and he sang the song Joy to the World and people were standing up and they were wa waving their hands and they were, they were dancing. It was just a, a wonderful scene. It was a scene of joy. It was a scene of joy. Well, after the service, Rick got in a lot of trouble. He got in a lot of trouble for singing and playing that song. Not from the Russian congregation, but from the Americans. They didn't think he should have sang and played that song in church. But it provided so much joy to that congregation. I still remember that. And you know what? That's, that's what joy is. Joy seems to come and go. You can have a joyful experience, a peaceful and joyful experience, and all of a sudden the world comes in and takes that joy away, whether it's situations or whether it's people. Sometimes they just take the joy out of things. Some people, forgive me, but some people are just sticks in the mud. And the joy just disappeared from that wonderful experience. Joy, joy comes and joy goes. You know what? Joy is like grandchildren. They come and they go. I have three grandchildren and they are a joy. Uh, Jackson, who lives in Morgantown, and Evie and Ava, who live in Princeton. Now, I'm the closest to Evie. I'm the closest to Evie. She'll come on Saturday night and stay with us, and she always wants to go to church. I'll ask her. I'll say, Evie, do you want to go to church? Yes, I want to go to church. She loves church. She loves everything about church. She loves the building. She loves the, the windows. She loves the singing. She loves the music. She listens. She listens. And you know what? After the service, she goes home and she wants to watch the service again on YouTube. On YouTube. She is a joy. She calls me Pap. Pap. Now, there's some history about but behind that, Pap, uh, Pap Brown. He was a great, great grandfather to me, Pap Brown. He was the most contrary person, the most stubborn person, the most hateful person in Crumpernick. 
You don't believe me, just go to Kruppernick and ask somebody. He was hateful. My father tells the story about Pat Brown. He asked my dad to go and fur out a field, a large field, 18 or 20 rows, to plow with a team of horses, to plow out 18 or 20 rows to plant corn. My father agreed and he did that. Worked all day, all day. Well, the next morning my dad was coming back to plant the corn and he looked and all those furrows, all those rows had been smoothed over, every one of them. And they looked and Pat Brown was out there with a team of horses redoing everything. And my dad went to him and said, why are you doing this? And this is what he said. This is what Pat Brown said. It didn't suit me. <laughs> It didn't suit me. He was stubborn. He was hateful. Sometimes he was mean. And there was not a lot of joy when you was around Pat Brown. Well, sometimes I'm stubborn and I'm hateful. I hope I'm not mean. But sometimes there may not be a lot of joy around me. That's something <laughs> that I need to correct. Joy Joy comes and joy goes. It's like grandchildren. Isaiah, the Christmas prophet, prophesied that a savior was coming into the world, that he would proclaim release to the captives, good news to the poor, that the mountains, the mountains would be smoothed out. The roads, the crooked roads would be made straight. Isaiah prophesied that many years ago and it provided joy for the people. They experienced the joy of thinking that was coming to pass. But guess what? It didn't happen in their time. And that joy was there, but it was there just for a while and then it left. Many, many years after that, there was a man standing by the Jordan River and you could hear his voice all over. It just echoed all over. He was baptizing people in the River Jordan and he was prophesying, he was telling people that there was one that was coming that he was not fit to unloose their sandals, that he would make the mountains smooth and the road straight. He was talking about Jesus. And he says this, Jesus is on my heels. He's right behind me. And that provided joy for the people of that time. Now I'm sorry. I'm sorry about this. <laughs> but do you remember the story of the fig tree? I've mentioned the fig tree the last two sermons. A tree is one of the most important symbols in the Bible. At the beginning, in the beginning of Genesis, it talks about a tree in the center of the garden. And at the end of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, it talks about a tree. And probably the most important parable that Jesus ever told was the parable of the fig tree. Very, very important. We are to nurture, we are to water. It's a, it's a tree of fruit. First Sunday of Ad, Advent, we spoke about hope. We are to nurture hope. We are to be a people of hope. We are to receive that peace that passes all understanding and that comes through Jesus, our Lord, joy, joy comes and joy goes. Today, we light the candle, candle of joy.
hope, peace, and joy. Amen. Thank you.